President Obama taking a major hit in the polls as we enter the dog days of summer. Take a look at this brand new Fox News poll. 42% of voters say he is doing a good job. More than half, 52% say he is not. His disapproval rating has been this high only once before, and that was nearly three years ago. What's going on? Let's bring in our political insiders. John LeBoutlier, former Republican congressman for New York, Pat Cadell, Fox News contributor, former pollster for President Jimmy Carter, Doug Sean. He, too, is a Fox News contributor and a former pollster for President Bill Clinton. Gentlemen, good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Uh, why such abysmal poll numbers? Is it the economy? And the president's been out there, you know, yeah. drum beating this whole thing. But GDP is miserable. Joblessness is still incredibly high. And our own poll on Fox News found that 71 percent of the people say the president, all these economic speeches, same old stuff. Well, I think that's right, Greg. Look, the economy is in the doldrums. But there's more going on this week. With Snowden in the NSA in the press conference, we have a clear sense that we, our government is out of control. More generally, when you look at our international position, look at Russia, the summit is dead, the reset is dead. And bottom line, the Russians appear, as one administration official said, to be pushing us around. And in Egypt, Greg, bottom line, we've become a pariah. The country is in chaos, and Obama looks terrible. But, but Pat, the, the president says we just don't understand that it's really our fault and Republicans because well, these are phony scandals. Take a look at this. Americans say these aren't phony at all. These are quite serious. Benghazi, 78% say it is serious. 17% say it's phony. All down the line, Pat, they say, yeah, this isn't phony. It's serious. No, no. no. And by the way, the president had a press conference and those bold people in the Washington press corps, nobody bothered to ask him about that. I mean, in the White House, right. the lap dogs in the White House. But look, the numbers are worse than what, what Doug is saying. To Gallup had a seven-point drop in a day. It's held today. He's, they've got him at 41, 42 percent mm -hmm. approval, 50 disapproval, the worst in two years. And I think Doug's on to something. If we look at this stuff on foreign policy, the Wall Street Journal headline this week showing the picture of the ambassador and the, attack, and the crowds holding up, attacking Obama for supporting terrorists. You see what's happening in Syria. And I believe this backfiring on the, uh, yeah. what he had on Russia, the, instead of going confronting them, no one respects him, no one takes him seriously. The problem is the Republicans, the only voice they have on foreign policy, apparently, is John McCain and Lindsey well, Graham you know, running around with their pro-Muslim brotherhood. John, Egypt. on foreign policy, the president's foreign policy, Benghazi, may actually be quite symbolic. Our polls found a vast majority of people thought that he really dropped the ball on that and was asleep at the switch the night Americans desperately needed to be saved. Yeah, when I think people know that we're not being told the truth about it. I know we talked last week about... 36 CIA personnel who were secretly evacuated that night right. and have been pressured by the administration not to talk to the Congress. Our voters say that, that we polled say he's covering it up. Right. Well, I know of one. Now, yeah. I know of 62%. one. 62 percent. Believe it's one, unbelievable. One of these CIA people who has refused to be polygraphed and cooperate and wants to talk to Congress called a congressman this past week. And so far, that hasn't been allowed, right. but there is unhappiness brewing. But let me say this about the whole big picture. When I hear you all talk about it, it reminds me of 1979, an unhappy period in Pat Cadell's life. He's in the uh, Carter White House. <laughs> we had a, an anemic economy. We had a, a foreign policy with failures all over the place. Right. So we didn't have the, these pervasive scandals. No, we did. We had the hostage crisis right. dragging it down. But here's what we had. We had over here on the right, Ronald Reagan coming up quickly with a common sense, peace through strength. I am going to be strong. America is going to be strong. And we don't have that now. We don't. we don't. The Republicans, we, we were talking before, they're divided over what to do. Well, that could change. There's a lot of time before 2016. Look, Ed Henry at the news conference asked the president why nobody has been brought to justice in the Benghazi situation in 11 long months. Here's the president's answer. Take a look. Well, the... Uh... I also said that we'd get bin Laden, and I didn't get him in 11 months. Uh, so uh, we uh, have informed, I think, the public that there's a sealed indictment. Uh, it's sealed for a reason. 
uh, but we are intent on uh, capturing uh, those who carried out this attack. Uh, and we're going to stay on it until we get them. Dougie Dodge, the question. Yeah. One of the guys in Dada Katala is sitting around and everybody's interviewing him. He's on speed dial for yeah. journalists. I mean, you know, CNN features the guy prominently. We apparently can't find him. The president is <laughs> talking about sealed indictments that arguably he shouldn't be talking about. Right. Bottom line, we look impotent, Greg. Our foreign policy looks weak. And what John and Pat are saying is exactly yeah, right. What's offensive is he keeps saying, I killed bin Laden. Right. The SEALs did. Right. I mean, I've never this seen This is America, Pat. This, is Amer this man is an egomaniac. I take no blame for anything that goes wrong but anything goes right i did i want but your here, opinion uh, on this i yeah. want to play a soundbite here here's the president talking about ed snowden and the nsa and i want your reaction to this here it is if you look at the reports even the disclosures that mr snowden's put forward all the stories that have been written uh, what you're not reading about is the government actually abusing these programs and uh you know, listening in on people's phone calls or inappropriately reading people's emails. What you're hearing about is the prospect that these could be abused. Why does the president want to change it if it's not being abused? Isn't he letting Ed Snowden win? Yes, he is. Well, I mean, Snowden is winning because the country thinks he but basically told him something they should know. Look, his head of intelligence, Mr. General Clapper, went to the Congress and committed outright perjury, which he admitted he lied to the Congress, with no consequence. The problem with the NSA is we found out last week we have the stuff where the DEA has been drawing off their data. We don't know. The American people are right about one thing. They don't trust the people in power and what they will do with this. And that is what the president's fighting. And by the way, how can you blame them? We have all of these scandals going on, all of which basically are about covering up stuff. Se Seventy-five percent of the American people believe the government is listening in on the phone calls. Yeah. They believe it already. Well, so, isn't the president single-handedly giving stature and credibility to Ed Snowden? And why in the world? Would he do that? Well, but because he's incompetent on this particular issue and his security services let this guy run amok, it's part of uh, Doug's original answer. Why is the president's rating so low? One of the main reasons is there are no successes here. There's nothing good happening from well, the government. He calls a success canceling the meeting with Vladimir Putin because of Ed Snowden. And then the president hauls off on national television and likens Putin to a, a kid, a bored kid slouching in the classroom. What's the point of a personal insult? Greg, there is no point. Moreover, I've done a great deal of work in the former Soviet Union, particularly the Russian Federation related nations. I know how the Russians relate to this. This will not be forgotten. Moreover, the reset policy vis-a-vis -vis the Russians is dead. We don't have a foreign policy to deal with our adversaries like Russia and China. Well, here's the problem which is added to this. They don't respect him, and we're not respected in the world, and we are not seen as leading. And the president's attack on Putin, yeah. instead of him going and confronting Putin, but the one thing about Barack Obama is he's not going to go and confront anyone. He will get up there and talk and, about being And, and by the way, the, John, the, the energy in that press conference, he was at his highest level of energy on this issue when he was talking about gay rights in Russia. Now, is that the biggest issue between the two countries? He also talked about Obamacare, Doug, and he said, you know, it's the goal of Republicans to prevent 30 million Americans oh, from oh, becoming insured. God. Does the president not realize that the number isn't 30 million, it's 48 million? You, this is his signature issue, and yet he doesn't know a fundamental fact Look, about it? All he knows, Greg, is that if he plays politics with the issues, and does what we've been talking about, demonize the Republicans who have no answer, they have no alternative to Obamacare, he can get away with the kind of egregious errors yeah. you're speaking right, We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back with our political insiders in just a moment. Hillary Clinton, seen by many as the front runner for the Democratic presidential nomination in 2016. But what do Democrats really think about her? We're going to have some poll numbers that may surprise you. Let's put the first one up. Now, admittedly, this is not among Democrats. This is all voters. But Hillary Clinton has a substantial lead. And I think, Pat, you were telling me it's like 63 to 12 among Democrats. Among Democrats, voted. yeah, it's huge. But um, look at this next one. Would least like to see win the 2016 Democratic nomination 
Um, look at that, Doug. Well, two things. Look, Hillary is dominant among Democrats. She's clearly the front runner. But with that goes some degree of notoriety. And she's also uh, the most polarizing figure and has the least likely. Now, some of that, Greg, to be candid, are Republicans. She's got a really big deep pocket super PAC called NBC helping her out, uh, Pat. Well, is, this, is this planned mini-series about Hillary Clinton's life? Nothing more than a political ad masquerading as unbiased production? Of course it is. Of course it is. And it's even worse with CNN, which is cable news network. They don't even have a, a media, a different, a different division. entertainment division. They're doing one. <clears throat> this is, of course it is. That's what it is. And, you know, and, and Rance Priebus, who I have problems with, at least he was tough this week, said we're yeah. not going to let you have debate. They should because they get run over. Hollywood believes its job is to promote people. But look, part of it is, I go back to what you asked about health care, about the president. But part of it is because the Republicans have no narrative. Last week, when the president and then the leaders of Congress made right. the deal for these guys, you right. know, to get their, so that the staffs and it didn't have to pay what we're all paying. Right. You know what? Nobody said a word. All right, but it's early. Let's put up the Razzie poll um, on the Republican primary were it to be held today. Look at this. Chris Christie, 21%. Marco Rubio, 18 Jeb Bush, not far behind. Dubious that he'll run. Rand Paul, Paul Ryan. As a matter of fact, today, John, Paul Ryan sent out a pretty splashy letter to the Romney workers during the last campaign, yeah. telling them how wonderful they are. Please get in contact. Is he run? Is he running? Well, he's thinking about it seriously, and he, uh, like most losing vice presidential candidates, when four years later they run for the nomination for president, they go nowhere. Well, and at least most of them don't pick the worst campaign in history yeah. to appeal to to help that's, them that's do true. it. Is but Chris Christie a polarizing campaign. figure? Yes. Uh, and let's put up yeah. the next Razzie poll here, Rasmussen poll, because look at this, would least like to see win the 2016. Chris Christie is, he, he's, hold on one sec, Doug, just because yep. it's in my empty head for a minute. Sure. I, I would say that Chris Christie, is the best general election candidate the Republicans have. Because he but appeals he, to both. Yeah, he's, he's, a lot he's of winning in a, he's there, gonna there, get there, a blue state. He's going to be reelected. Yeah. There's a but here. Chris Christie embraced the president a week before the general election, probably worth a point or two for President Obama in the aftermath of the hurricane. Ah, the GOP will get over it. No. Well, no, I don't think so. You talk to some of the bundlers and money people, they haven't forgotten. But when I, they I realize that maybe he's the guy who can win. I think the problem with the Republican Party is about to go to civil war anyway, as we're starting to see. The question with Christie is, he may be the potentially strongest independent candidate I've ever I've seen right. as a Pat, I think he figure. could win as an independent. So right. He won't run as an independent. I know so his run, numbers will yeah. run in the Republican primary. Let me put primaries. up the PPP poll in Georgia, because it's just it's a little little microcosm here, but I want you guys to talk about it. Now, what do you think about this? Look, it says that Hillary in a red state has got a strong, arguably commanding position. That's because of her strength, the weakness of the Republican brand that Pat and John and I have been talking about. Bottom line, this is good news for her. Tied with Jeb Bush. Yeah, in a, in a heavily red Republican state, and this is, people aren't focused on it admittedly. Yeah, they're not focusing yet. But the point is, she is still, as a default candidacy, way ahead. Well, Chris, she's that Christie close, beats her there in Georgia. And he's again, the best. It's, almost, it's ridiculously the best. early. If Chris Christie could somehow get nominated, right. he could win a general election against Hillary. I don't think any of those other Republicans. I don't think he there. could get nominated, that, John. That's Our political the issue. insider. Oh, famous words. Okay, yep, mark I don't this think on he will. your calendar. Exactly. He can't get nominated. Yep. Won't be nominated. <laughs> All right. There you go. Gentlemen, right. thanks very much. You can get more from our political insiders, John and Pat and Doug, every Monday at 1030 a.m. Eastern Live. Dot foxnews.com. And they're, of course, going to be back here next Sunday. You can also follow them on Twitter at FN Insiders.